Hi, my name is Daniel Burka, and I'm here with Mahima Chandak. So I'm a product designer and a product manager, and Mahima is calling in from Bangalore, is, is a product designer and user researcher. So Mahima and I work on massive public health challenges, and we work with the former director for the Centers for Disease Control uh, under President Obama, a guy named Dr. Tom Frieden, along with the Indian government and some local groups in India. We work on the biggest problem in the world, high blood pressure. So hypertension, the fancy name for high blood pressure, kills more people than all infectious diseases combined. Hypertension is a leading indicator for cardiovascular disease. And if you could help more people to control their blood pressure, you could save about 100 million lives from heart attacks and strokes in just 30 years. But because it's such a big problem, you run into really difficult challenges at scale in a country the size of India. In a typical clinic, about one in three or one in four of adult patients will have hypertension, which means that a clinician needs to take their blood pressure, needs to counsel the patient, and needs to treat the patient correctly and record some information about them in a very short period of time. This is a photo of a typical hospital in, uh, in India and you can see there's a giant line of patients just waiting to have their blood pressures taken. So how do you start on such a big problem? Well, we started in one small place. Well, small by Indian standards. We started in Punjab, India, working with the Ministry of Health in Punjab. Punjab's got about 25 million people. And we started there to figure out what could actually work within the context of Indian healthcare. Mahima, do you want to describe what the day in the life of a typical healthcare worker is? Thanks, Daniel. During the early phases of Simple, we had the chance to spend a lot of time with healthcare workers on field to understand about their life in a lot of detail. So here, the person that you see is Bhupinder Ji, who was a nurse at a public hospital in rural Punjab. Let me tell you a little bit about the day in the life of Bhupinder Ji and the context in which Simple is used. When Bhupinderji gets to her facility early in the morning, she already has a long line of patients who are waiting for treat to be treated by her. So the picture that you see over there, the second picture, is a typical view of Bhupinderji when she walks into a hospital. On an average, she's treating about 100 patients a day, which means that she is not only taking their blood pressures and giving them medication, but also trying to understand from them on a personal level what their lifestyle habits are like, counseling them, writing their entries in registers and giving, sending them to the, hospital, to the doctor for medical care. So as you can imagine, Bhupinderjeet works in a very high velocity environment and she has very little time for patient. Along with speaking to a lot of healthcare workers and understanding about their lives, we also spend a lot of time on field doing observation interviews. So we sat in corners of clinics, just observed how care happens, and through the con constraints in which our product is going to be used. And after talking to 100 healthcare workers, if there's one thing that was unanimous in their feedback for us, was just, please don't make our life any harder, right? So the one takeaway for us was that, how do we design software that is out of their way, that equips them more than actually takes time away from patient care? Another way to say the same thing is that no one cares about your software. This might sound controversial, like you care very much about designing great software for your users, but in many ways, people just want to get their jobs done and want the software to stay out of their way. That couldn't be more true in a clinic in India. Clinicians did not come to work to do data entry. They came to treat the patient who's sitting across the table from them and to give them the best possible experience. And considering how tight clinical times are, if you only get a few minutes per patient, you really need to maximize that time helping the patient. So we created a piece of software that we call Simple. It's really easy to use and it can work within the strict context of busy clinical care in India. So how do you make simple software? Well, Mahim and I have a bunch of lessons that we wanna share with you that help us create simple software that really does work for clinicians. 
The first thing we did is we set KPIs or key performance indicators. So based on our own observations, as well as clear scientific evidence from the, the literature, we know that a typical clinical visit in India is between two and four minutes. In Bangladesh, it's closer to two minutes. This is really tight. In America or in Europe, a typical clinical visit is almost 15 minutes by comparison. So we figure if a clinician only has two minutes per patient, we could only probably take up about 20 seconds of their time to do data entry. Even 20 seconds, a very, very small period of time to do data entry represents one sixth of a typical clinical visit. So we set this KPI before we even started designing. This was our North Star goal. The next thing we did is we focused below the surface. So if you think of a typical public health program like an iceberg, the software part, the data entry part that we were focused on is really just the tip of the iceberg. If the part underneath the surface, the actual public health program is complicated, well, we're really in trouble to begin with and we'll have an almost impossible task in front of us to make a simple tool. Well, we're a bunch of designers. How are we gonna make a simple public health program? The short story is we don't, but we work with the people who do. If you look at this, you know, the photos here, this is from the early days of the Resolve to Save Lives, the organization behind Simple. Almost no one in these photographs is a designer. You've got Tom Frieden, who is one of the leading public health experts in the world. You've got Alka, who is our country director in India. You've got a whole bunch of public health experts here. But working with them, we're talking about the practical constraints in the field, and together, we design a really simple public health program that can scale. What you end up with is a simple treatment protocol. That's the way that healthcare workers actually treat patients. You come up with a much simpler way to treat patients than, than is standard. You come up with a simple drug procurement plan. So it's easy to stock thousands of hospitals with enough medications to treat patients. You have simple workflows within the clinics for, for, um, for clinical care. And then really important for the technology side is we decide what we're going to measure. And you have to measure simple but really critical key indicators based on really simple data. And with this foundation in place, now we're able to start towards design. And when we started designing, we started with a process called a design sprint. So my previous job was actually at Google Ventures, uh, Google's venture capital arm. And my colleagues and I, Jake Knapp, Braden Kowitz, John Zaratsky, and Michael Margolis wrote a book called Sprint that explains this process. And so in this photo, you can actually see us. We did a five-day process where we prototype what kind of software might actually work within an Indian clinic. And in only five days, we had a very realistic prototype created um, using Figma. And we were able to go and test that in the field with real healthcare workers. So we worked with a user research firm in Maharashtra in India, and we actually tested the software within that week with healthcare workers and got a good signal back that this was a plausible direction to go in. Well, okay, we've done some pre-work. We've designed a simpler health program. We have some good ideas, but now Mahima is gonna to talk to you about how you design real software in the, real, in the field. So once we've got the foundation in place and we have an idea, good idea about exactly where we need to proceed, we started designing our software. I would like to take a couple of minutes here to go through a couple of examples in our software to explain how we really, really simplify things and create software that is easy to use and just does enough while doing everything. The first example that I wanna talk about is the BP entry screen. It's a very small task that our users do on the screen, but it is also one of the tasks that they need to repeatedly. So like I was telling you earlier, a nurse like Bupinder Ji, sees about 100 patients a day, which means she needs to interact with this particular screen 100 times a day at the least. So how do you make this particular process simpler? I'm gonna get a little bit nerdy over here, so just bear with me. But a blood pressure has two readings. It's got the systolic reading, which is 120 on the first reading that you see. And it's about a diastolic reading, which is the second entry that you see, the lower, the bottom one. So 
we said, okay, we know that if a systolic reading is starting with one or two, then it's going to be a three digit number. And after that, we need to immediately auto shift to the diastolic reading when they're doing data entry. We don't expect them to actually tap and enter more readings. But if the reading is starting with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then we know that the jump needs to happen after two digits. Now, these kind of decisions typically don't seem like design in the way we understand design. And we understand designing simple software as you know, really having bold text, clear labels, and that's very important, don't get me wrong. But this is also extremely important in thinking about how you design software that's error-free, that is fast to use, and that's really, really simple. The other example that I'd like to talk about is how we design for search within our software. I'm sure many of you in the audience have designed for search at some point in your life. And we know that it's a really hard problem to solve. How do you really design for a good search? So well, before we introduced manual search in the software, our healthcare workers were searching for patients within paper records. So it would take them close to eight to 10 minutes to actually search for a patient with from many, many books that they actually, and registers that they actually keep. So we said, okay, step one, let's add a really good search in the software. So today on Simple, a healthcare worker can search for a patient by different kinds of indicators. It can be their name, it can be their number and ID. As they keep entering the input, we filter search results. Now, all of this might seem intuitive to you because we use softwares that are designed really well. But in the world of healthcare and in the world of health software, this is something that's not a practice. You could either search by name or by number or by ID. So our step one was to design a good one search. Once we introduced this, we went into the field again to observe how search is working and if how we thought we've designed search is actually working well for our users. And we encountered a unique problem that is very particular to India which is we found that many patients who come back to the facility have the same first name, same last name, belong to the same village or town, and probably do not have phone numbers or IDs that we can distinguish them from. So when your software looks like what you see on the right with many Kuldeep Singhs with very different, very little age difference, how do you really identify between these search results and make the correct decision over here in a high velocity environment? There are adverse effects to actually entering data to a wrong patient over here. So we said, okay, if there is a fast search and that is helping users more than, you know, looking through registers and books, what can be better than that? Well, no search is actually better than fast search. So we designed these patient cards where there is a small QR code. It's a health ID, A4 size, small and compact. You can carry it around with you. And a healthcare worker can now just scan this QR code and within less than two seconds, actually just find a patient's profile without having to actually look through a long list of Kuldeep things in their software. The patient's ideas we designed do definitely solve the problem of search and problem of software in our, um, in our um, software. But there's something that they also solve larger than a software problem which is a service design problem. One of the big problems in a healthcare environment in a hospital is how does data travel from one particular part of the hospital to another part? So a healthcare worker or a nurse will be taking a patient's BP in room A, but a, but a doctor who's sitting in room B is actually treating the patient. Now, how does data actually travel from room A to room B? These cards that we designed actually solve that problem as well. So it's common to see that uh, patient brings in this card, the nurse quickly writes the BP, takes it to the doctor. The doctor looks at the BP and says, oh, okay, you look like you're hypertensive, gives them a change of medications. The patient then takes the card to the pharmacy and the pharmacist dispenses medicines based on what's written in the card. This is also helpful for data to be carrying across facilities because we also observe there is a lot of flexibility between patients traveling from one facility to another. So in fact, patient IDs are innovation too. And this is also real design. So let's go back to the beginning. When we started the project, we set ourselves very strict key performance indicators of the time to care that we thought we could establish using this tool called Simple. Every month, we're measuring the metadata in the app to look at how long it takes for 
users to um, complete uh, key tasks. Now, if you remember from earlier, our goal was 20 seconds or less for a follow-up visit. Today, the median time for a follow-up visit in Simple is 14 seconds. That's only 14 seconds to find the right patient, enter their blood pressure, update their medicines, schedule a follow-up visit, and, and close the patient's profile. It's very, very quick. Uh, the time to register a new patient is just over a minute. I want us to remember how this multiplies over thousands of patients. Just in the last month, 850,000 patients from across India were, uh, had a follow-up visit in Simple. And if you multiply you know, the extra five seconds we've saved across 850,000 patients, that is hundreds of hours for busy healthcare workers that's reclaimed that they can actually interact with their patients and came to do the job that they wanted to do in the clinic. So as we said at the beginning, we started off small in Punjab in the Northwest of India, and we've expanded out from there. As you saw on the map on the previous slide, we're now all over India. We're in 17 states in India, as well as in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Ethiopia. Just four years later, we've seen a significant growth in the number of patients who are enrolled and being treated using Simple as their longitudinal record. And this is a really phenomenal accomplishment because almost all of the facilities that we work in use paper records almost exclusively for recording patients. And those paper records are just transactional records. It's what happened today for each patient, as opposed to a longitudinal record over time. And it's really wonderful that Simple has taken root and healthcare workers have been able to adopt it and learn it quickly. And as you can see, we have many, many registered patients. In fact, I'm very excited to share with you that yesterday we crossed a huge milestone. Literally yesterday, um, a clinician in India uh, registered the two millionth patient into Simple. And this represents an enormous amount of work by healthcare workers. I was telling our team that if you imagine 2 million people walking down a road and you've got rows of tables set up to take people's blood pressures, to diagnose those patients, and later on you have to follow up with as many of those patients as you can every month, it would just be an unbelievable number of people. It would just be an overwhelming march of people coming for over a day, just walking down that road. And this is what's happening every month now in India is, you know, almost a million patients are coming back to care each month and being recorded into a piece of software, which is really exciting when we think of it that way. So let's recap. What did we learn that makes simple software that's actually functional in these high velocity, difficult environments in these clinics in India? The first thing is to spend lots of time with your users. Ask them what they want. Observe how they do clinical care. You wouldn't believe how much public health software is developed by people in capital cities just assuming what's happening on the ground out in the hospitals and in rural places. It's so, so valuable to spend time out with your users. For us, it was really critical to set KPIs and then to be diligent about following up on those KPIs. It's Fundamental that we started by designing a simple public health program. Remember, this isn't really typical design, but if you start applying design later in the process, after the public health program is already in place, you're starting from your back foot and you're likely to fail. Mahima gave us a bunch of great tips on simplifying your UI. We find that when we design almost any feature, we come up with a complicated solution first, and then spend days simplifying, simplifying until we come up with something that appears obvious, but obviously wasn't obvious to begin with. It's really difficult to understand this, but nothing is often better than something. As Mahima was showing us, the only thing better than a good search is no search at all. And we came up with this solution by looking at service design as, as an opportunity to, to um, create a better interface. And service design generally is so important to public health. The way the data moves around a facility is not just limited to digital systems. 
It can be tied to paper systems as well or verbal within the clinic. And we really look for those types of opportunities to make sure that clinical care is as good quality as possible. And most of all, measure what you do and iterate your way to success. We've made lots of mistakes along the way. We've done lots of things that turned out to be bad decisions later. But the key is we learned from them, we improved, and now we've got software that's easy to learn and actually works in busy clinical environments, as evidenced by having 2 million patients as of yesterday. Thank you so much for having Mahim and I. We've really had a pleasure talking to you today. And um, yeah, thank you so much.